So I've got a pretty awesome video for you guys this week. A trip that we did quite a while back earlier this year, doing similar stuff to what we normally do. Isolated bombies looking for reds, mangrove jacks and tusfish. And we came across this bommie that was so filled with life that I thought it was worth just making an entire video about this one spot. And before we jump straight into that particular bommie, I'll take it back to one that we found just beforehand, which also had a red emperor on it. And we were pretty much just searching around all day on different ground from where we've normally been. and. It took us a while before we actually found a few fish. The first few hours were very quiet and then we came across this bommy, which had this relatively nice sized red on it, around 58 centimeters. And just like most reds, this one made it extremely easy for Ivan to get up close and put a perfect holding shot into him. Always such curious fish. Being the very first bommy of the day to provide us with a decent fish, I decided to check all the surrounding rocks, see if it was just a little patch that was relatively healthy and that led us straight onto this next bommie which was just undescribable because the amount of fish life that we saw was nothing I'd ever seen in previous trips from Trevally's, Tusfish, Mangrove Jack and Red Emperor all on the same one rock and schooling up in big numbers. I think all up we saw around eight or so tusk fish around that 60 to 70 centimeter mark, four or five mangrove jacks well and truly over 60 as well on it, and four or five reds on the same spot. This was my biggest jack ever. I was actually quite surprised when he first swam in. I wasn't expecting it and I just put a, the first shot he presented and he tangled me up pretty badly in the reef but luckily I was pretty fast and reacted on it and um, got him out before having to swim back up to the surface. Mangrove jacks can always be such a pain in that situation and leaving them on the bottom just leads to the potential for bull sharks or any other sharks nearby to get drawn in by the commotion and then put either you and your buddies at risk and also chance of losing that fish. My next dive down is probably to date one of my most memorable dives. It was pretty insane getting to the bottom and seeing so many fish. I hadn't seen the reds on the dive previously with the jack and as I got to the bottom there were four or five reasonable reds all between that 60 to 65 centimeters, centimeters length just cruising around and honestly it was just absolutely amazing. Um, Finding a spot like this is what you sort of dream of and being able to just be on the bottom and see all these fish swim by was really, really magical. And I decided not to take anything. I just wanted to sit on the bottom, enjoy it and just watch these fish cruise by. Seeing how curious the reds were, we wanted to get our friend Andreen onto her first red. It was actually her first time ever spearfishing the reef and so we made it our goal to put her right onto the fish for the next few dives and Ivan helps guide her down, points out the fish and she places a perfect shot straight into its head and um, ended up landing her very first red emperor and this one actually ended up being one of the bigger ones of the day it was around 62 centimeters which is honestly pretty awesome for your first red ever at the reef
With the last bit of light, we did a few more dives, hoping that maybe all that commotion from earlier might have brought something new in. There didn't really seem to be too much else happening, but in this video you can sort of see how many tusfish there were just in that tiny little spot. There's four that are easily over 60. And uh, we weren't really thinking about taking too many other fish. Um, I shot my mangrove jack, Andrine got her red emperor, and Ivan decided just to go for one more red before ending the day. All right, the last 30 minutes of the day and uh, we just cleaned up. We found a couple absolutely beautiful spots and uh, Ivan, PB Red Emperor. Woo! And uh, show us Andrine's Andrine's, red as well. That's the biggest one today. So her first trip out on my boat and she's landed uh, <laughs> six, 60 centimeter Red Emperor. Probably. Yeah. Are you pretty stoked? Yeah. I think it's bigger than 60. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually yeah. huge. <laughs> and then I landed my PB Mangrove Jack, 73 <laughs> centimeters. That is insane. That's one effective half an hour. All right, next morning and Andrew's making eggs. <laughs> we, I don't know. And um, we anchored up just on top of the bommy that we got all the reds and jacks yesterday so plan is for us to just jump straight in the water and uh what do you reckon ivan what's on the cards for the day an 80 centimeter red and a couple crayfish or what yeah i want um jack mangrove jack and cray jack. yeah i did see a few mangrove jacks so we'll see what we can do what about you i want to shoot the mahi mai no <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> all right you wouldn't believe it but Three minutes in the water on this bommy and he's just got a 60 centimeter mangrove jack maybe even like 65 <laughs> that's actually a stonker there was five my uh, four mangrove jacks nice literally just on this tiny bommy here So there were three main things that made this bommie in particular extremely exceptional in fish life and probably the reason why all the mangrove jacks and red emperor were drawn towards it would have had to do with these bait fish. Um, everywhere you looked around the bommie was completely filled with them. You couldn't see through any of the cracks because they were just filling it. And um, very often those little bait fish are very good for bringing other predators as well when we have previously had what we thought was a coral trout spawning aggregation we had a similar thing where there was heaps of those little baits and we saw around 200 coral trout on one single bommie and another factor about this um, bommie in particular is that it was very circular and the sides were very distinct it wasn't a slow rise it actually just came straight up and from what i've found bommies that seem to do that have a lot more fish life than those that have slow rises and another factor of course was that it had really big cracks all throughout the bommy um, places for those mangrove jacks to hide and several other um, predatorial species they really like that kind of stuff and it just all those three things combined I think made that bommy so good and so amazing to dive on that particular day and another fish that I was extremely surprised to find on this particular bommie was a jobfish. 
um, for me that sort of go to show um, how big of an impact that bomby was having on all the surrounding area it was really bringing absolutely everything in and especially for a job fish generally a slightly deeper water fish um, for us to be in around only 12 meters of water and see one around this size is pretty rare As we wrapped up our last dives of the day, Ivan was really keen to get a video of this wobby going in this cave. And uh, so he fed it one of the sea brims that we'd shot earlier. And it was actually really cool seeing the reaction that it had. It was such a, a snap and um, I honestly got frightened when, when it happened while watching it. But um, the last couple dives were really cool. We just kept seeing more and more of what we had already been seeing and we didn't really want to shoot any more fish. We took two reds and the two mangrove jack and then the one job fish off the whole bommy over two days. And I think actually the only two fish I shot for the whole trip came from that one spot and um, it was important for me to make sure that we didn't take too much and tried to sort of keep that spot lively so that hopefully next time when we go back um, those mangrove jacks and reds that we left will hopefully bring even more into that spot. 